We are live with Kfir. What's up? Hi, Eddie. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm honestly very excited to, to be here uh, in this live session. And uh, you know how when you start a live session, you realize that uh, you forgot to do something? So what yeah. I realized is that I forgot to change the lighting because I have a light that is in front of me and I have a light above me. So now the light above me is on and you can see all of these weird shades on my face. But that's, that's live, you know? That's what wonderful, like the good and the bad about going live. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's totally okay. This is a good you? problem. What do you say? What about you? How are you today? While we're waiting I'm for more to join us. Yes, I'm also pretty excited about this session. Um, I think that, you know, most of the sessions we did on the last year or even two years in the Java community. So it was mostly about um, Java and automation. And I think yeah. there is a lot of uh, missing knowledge and missing value when it comes to content and viable content. And I think I, I didn't share a lot of knowledge about it. And what you're going to do today is going to be really, 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 really cool. So I'm pretty excited. Um, so guys, everyone who coming now, we don't have a lot of people that want to see that it's coming up. Any question that you have for Kfir, he is going to represent himself in 30 seconds. Um, I also recommend, I don't know like if you're now watching this session, if you're in your home, if you're at work or driving, I hope not. But if you have the option to take a note and to write some, uh, like some notes, it's very, very important. Trust me, it's going to be worth your time and energy. So Kfir, 30 seconds, you're going to just Drink something small, glass of water. Guys, be ready. And 30 seconds, we're going live. Actually, I, if it's okay with you, I would like to ask for those of you who yeah. have already joined. I'm not yeah. really sure where can I see. I think that you can see if people are joining or not. And I cannot see how many people are live right now. So I'm just going to go with the flow and assume that we have hundreds of people with us. Um, and uh, I'll say that uh, if you're here and uh, if you're listening to this live or maybe you're listening to this recording, um, in order to prime this, this discussion about, uh, about content strategy, I would love if you could share in the comments before we're getting started um, a little bit about yourself, like maybe in which niche your uh, Instagram account is. So what is it that, what, why are you creating content, right? Are you like a small business or do you run a big repost account with millions of followers? And then how do you find how do you decide what content to create what is it that what is the process that you do uh, i see that already people are commenting so guys first hi I'm, I'm very happy that you're here but let's make it an interesting discussion say how do you today uh, find content uh, or decide what content to post because this is what this live session is going to be all about we're going to talk about how to use content in order to generate organic growth. What is the process? And it's going to be a methodologic process that you can do in order to increase uh, the performance of your account, the, the organic reach of your account by using content. And Adi, I love the, the sessions like unsubscribe, You're, you and, and Tal uh, from Social Proxy, you guys are showing like crazy things about automation and like, and it's all part of organic growth. But uh, what you mean by organic growth when you do those sessions with Tal, when you use, for example, Jarvi to generate organic growth, you, you, it's, we refer to it as organic growth because you don't pay for it, right? There is organic versus paid. And when you use Jarvi, you generate organic, you, you generate traffic to your account without uh, without spending money on advertising. But when it comes to content, when you optimize your content, you, you have an overall improvement of the account. It's starting from the reach of the content. And then let's say that you use Jarvi. This is why it goes so well together. If the content arrives, let's say that you use Jarvi and you automatically followed and unfollowed someone and he came to your account. If your content is constantly optimized, you're going to have better results with whatever traffic comes to your account because you continuously optimize your content. And this is why these topics are blending so well together. Uh, so why don't you tell me when, when can we start? And if we have anyone that uh, already shared with us uh, in the comments uh, 
how do you guys find, how do you guys decide what to post today? Let's see. Uh, very interesting actually to see the comments. I haven't seen them yet and also share it on Telegram. So I'm guessing some um, people will join us also from Telegram. And I think if no comments in the next one minute, so you can definitely start. I think I'll start uh, by, by showing uh, what are going to be the topics that we're going to talk about today. Um, and I divided this presentation, this, this master class, this class, I'm going to call it class, um, to three parts. The first part is going to be a theoretical, and it's going to give you, we're going to quote some very, very knowledgeable people. And we're, we're going to look at facts around how does the Instagram algorithm work. This is not going to be something that is based on my experience alone or some theories. These are going to be hard facts about how the Instagram algorithm work and what we can learn from it in order to generate growth. And then the second thing, the second part will be uh, to look at how does professional marketers generate organic growth? So based on those facts and the theoretical knowledge that we gain, we're not going to yet create the process for growth, but we're first going to look at what does professional marketers do in order to generate growth. And then based on, you know, knowing how the Instagram algorithm works, plus understanding how professional marketers uh, grow organically, we will be able to build uh, the ideal process of how to generate uh, more engagement. And it's going to be a simple three steps process. I'm, I promise you, while I love to use all kinds of like names, like secrets and like, uh, I don't know, yeah, you know, a lot of people say, I'll, I'll tell you the secrets. These are actually not secrets. These are actually just best practices, which are well known in the industry. Um, so in order to get started, I'll, I'll, I guess it, I should probably uh, introduce myself. Um, my unpronounceable name, which Adi has no problem to say because we live in the same country, uh, so people in Israel can pronounce this name, it's Kfir. It actually means um, a baby lion, a lion's cub in the language of Hebrew. Um, and about six years ago, I started my software entrepreneurship journey. I've been a hustler for many years before. I started my first business at the age of 17 and a half, and today I'm 32, so make the math. Uh, but six years ago, I created the software company. I co-founded a software company called DSM Tool, uh, which if you have ever been doing dropshipping, especially dropshipping on eBay, uh, you most likely have heard of it because until today, more than 200,000 people uh, signed up to the software and we have thousands of customers and I still own the company today. Uh, I studied uh, business entrepreneurship here in Israel. And as I said, I live, I, I live in Israel, uh, but what I'm here for today is um, I, I, throughout the year I've done business, uh, I've, been, I've been doing business in the uh, software area and uh, the latest and most interesting venture that I started uh, is called uh, Virospy. Um, and we're going, you're going to see that we're going to use this software today, but it's des definitely the most exciting project that I'm working on right now. And, but, you know, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about uh, organic growth. So I will stop, um, uh, what's the word there? I will stop embarrassing myself and I will move on to, to the content. And I want to start with uh, with a question. And Adi, I saw that you commented uh, your vote, but let's see what, what you would think. I want to ask you which one of the upcoming posts went viral and which one didn't. The first one is Justin Bieber posting a video of himself playing the drums. Now, I'm personally a drummer too, so I'm not going to judge him by how good of a drummer he is. I'm going to ask you, uh, how did, did this post went viral or not? And I'll give you another option. I'll tell you that one of these posts went viral and the other one didn't. The other post is a post by Adi. Uh, Adi, you probably know the answer because you know whether this post went viral uh, or not. And I want you guys to comment which one of the posts you think that went viral. Write in the comments, uh, Justin Bieber, if you think that the post by Justin Bieber that got 1.3 million views, yeah, that's the one that went viral, or 
the post by Adi that got 740 likes each. So I would love to to see um, what do you guys what do you guys think? And I I, I already see that uh, I don't know who it is because when someone comments on Facebook, we can't tell uh, who's the person, right? We can't say the name. But I see a, a comment that says. I'm handling a photo agency trying to get photo assignments from companies. It will be interesting to hear how do you choose what content uh, to post. And I hope that this webinar, therefore, will be uh, valuable for you. And OK, I see a comment that says Justin Bieber, because he's well known. That's the reason why his post obviously went viral. Adi, how many followers do you have? Um, 8,000, maybe? 8, like, 8,000, yeah. okay, yeah. Justin Bieber has a couple of millions, so makes it's an interesting claim that he might went viral. I'll give you the answer uh, while maybe we get more um, more comments. I actually, when I approach the question of which one of these posts went viral, what I want is the answer to be based on data, based on facts. And actually, if you take that answer about Justin Bieber and you say, I think that this post went viral, then the question depends on how many views does Justin Bieber get usually on his posts. And his videos on average are making almost 4 million views. 1.3 million views means that he posted something and that it only got 25%, about a quarter of what he gets on average. That's a very low rate of views for this post. Whereas your post, Adi, and you can see here, I already exposed that I used Viral Spy in order to, to see that, uh, to, to gather that information. Your post, which got 737 likes, actually made almost uh, eight almost uh, yeah almost eight times the average number of likes in your account so in terms of virality it seems like your post in comparison to the size of your account actually went much more viral compared to the post by Justin Bieber who yeah got 1.3 million views but on average he's making uh, so much more and the question is why? What makes a piece of content goes viral and what makes another piece of content die and not even make anything close to the average number of views or the average number of likes? And in order to answer this question, we need to invite someone to join to the live stream. Is that OK, Adi, if we invite another person uh, with us? Um, Definitely. <laughs> it's a very, very, very good friend. Not, not my friend and not a this friend, unfortunately for us. But uh, if you know who this guy is, please comment his name. And if you don't know who this guy is, say, I don't know. And let me tell you one thing. You should probably know who this guy is. But it's all right if you don't know. It makes sense. When I did the research, like this research, I, I didn't know him for that long. I'll give you a hint. He's a good friend of Mark Zuckerberg, uh, this guy. So uh, if you think that you know who it is, uh, comment the name. And if you don't know, then say, I don't know. And uh, yeah, we have, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I will give you the answer, um, of course. Uh, this is Adam Museri. Uh, he is the head of Instagram since 2018, uh, which is kind of like being the CEO of Instagram, only that in the Instagram software is uh, under the company Meta, which used to be called Facebook. So he is the head of Instagram, same way that they have a head of uh, Facebook, I guess, uh, in their company. And the reason that I'm inviting him to join us today uh, is because of his quotes. I want to um, I want to quote an article that he published in June 2021 that is called Shedding More Light on How Instagram Works. And actually, this article was never meant for us, the people who do marketing on Instagram. It was meant for the Instagram users community. And the idea behind the, the article was kind of like to calm down all of the cons uh, conspiracies around uh, how Instagram works and what is the like artificial intelligence behind it and are they taking over the world, yada, yada, yada. 
Um, and I want to use his one of his quotes from there, which is very intuitive and it's not going to be mind blowing for you. Um, but it's going to help us to understand how does Instagram work, where he says that when it comes to what is the chance for you to be exposed to a piece of content, the more likely you are to take an action, the higher up you'll see the post. And this is like the, 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 the most basic rule about how does content get exposed on Instagram. Because it can be in the news feed that it's accounts that you follow, and it can be in the explore feed, which is accounts that you don't follow and you're just exploring, and it can be with reels. Instagram constantly trying to figure out how likely you are to uh, take an action, and according to that, they decide uh, which post you will see. And I want to take a look together at the post by you, Adi, and here I want your help with it, and I want everyone's help, uh, everyone's help with it. I want us to count, when looking at the post, how many actions could people take when they were looking at this post, right? Because this post was exposed to a lot of people. How many actions were they able to take that Instagram measures in order for, um, for Instagram to decide, okay, we're going to expose this, this content to eight X, like eight times more than what we give her as exposure on average, which means that people interacted with it. And the question is, what were they able to do? Because likes and comments, these are the, the easiest ones. Um, why don't you guys comment? Let's see what, what you guys see. And Adi, list all of the things that you can see and bless you. Thank you. What can you see? Let's see. That was a fun post. I remember that. No, I, I'm talking about technical actions. Like someone yeah. sees that post, what, what kind of action they take? We said like, comment, what else? You want the users will, will comment? No, no, I want you to, to tell us ah, what you see. Sure, yes. Uh, you can send, you can share the post, um, right. you can save the post. Here, here and yes. here is the same. You can click the post, so you can click the photo. Uh, you can click on the photo and move to the next photo, right? And the next photo is a video, so what can you do with the video? You can also watch the video. Yeah, and it depends. So, for example, how long you watch the video is something that they would measure. What else? Uh, you can click on the profile to go to the link to the bio. Profile. You can follow. You can follow it directly from here. There are more actions that you can take here. You can click on, on the other accounts that were tagged in the post. You can click on hashtags. You can go to the comments and click on things in the comments, like the profile of the person, or you can click like on comments, and et cetera, et cetera. And like I've been told, Adi uh, uh, and I met in a conference last week, and someone talked about the speed of swipe, which is something I've never heard before, um, that is also being measured. Everything is being measured uh, in order to, to define how much reach a post is going to get. And if you guys have more ideas uh, of what, uh, what they could measure, so please comment and we would love to share it. Um, and uh, Adam, uh, Adam himself lists uh, not just interactions, but interactions by weight. Uh, which is time spent on the post is actually more important than comments, which are more important than likes, which are more important than saves, which are more important than tap on the profile photos. Um, and then uh, the article actually goes deeper into more topics of exactly things that they measure. And I've done an, an analysis of this article, and it's going to be part of this class's uh, kind of notes. You're going to get a list of resources in the end of the class. Uh, one of them is going to be the blog post uh, on the Viral Spy website, which is uh, which is analyzing uh, Adam's uh, article uh, word in word, and that also is is going over the three steps process that we're going to learn later. So you're going to have everything documented, uh, which sometimes it's nice to refer to uh, with you know written content that you won't have to watch all of the live uh, from the beginning because you already know uh, you already have the knowledge. Um, but I do want to, uh, to spend a little bit of time on one thing within the, the topic of how does, uh, how does Instagram uh, make content go viral. And it is the, the journey that 
a piece of content can go through. Because this journey starts when you post anything on social media, by the way, not just Instagram, it is first being exposed to your biggest fans. Because these, like Adam said, are the users that are most likely to interact with your content because they have been interacting with your content all the time until today. So your biggest fans are, um, are going to be exposed to, to the content. And then one of two things is going to happen. Option number one is poof. They don't like the content. They don't interact with it. They don't spend time with it. And it shuts down. And that's what you saw with Justin Bieber. He might be a great drummer in his own opinion, but apparently his audience didn't really like uh, the, the content they created. The other option is that they would love the content, which is what happened with your post a day, and they will go wild about it on it, and they will spend time on it, and they will like, and they will comment, and they will take their friends, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and I'm making it a little bit like a dichotomic black and white. It's like either or. It's not really like that. Actually, there is a range. And somewhere here in the middle is your average, uh, what we saw, the average number of likes, the average number of views. And any post that you post can go anywhere between nothing to completely viral, compared, of course, to, to your account, or to the average uh, um, engagement in your account. And I'm sharing this with you because if there is one thing and one thing only that I want you to take out of this class today, it's one single and very one simple uh, rule. It is that the average engagement level of your account is the north star of your business, of your, I mean, of your social media activity. When you, if you will manage to continuously increase the average engagement level, then no, look, no matter how, what, what I'm going to teach you about what content to create, it's not possible that all of the content will go completely viral all the time. So if you aim at a post going viral, but then the rest of your content is not increasing the average engagement level, you don't really generate growth. And by following the average engagement level, which is more important than even the number of followers that you have, you, if you increase the average engagement level over time, you increase the good, genuine, high quality traffic that, uh, that your account gets. And that usually is what you're able then to turn into money uh, if, you, if your purpose is uh, a business or to impact because not everyone, let's say politicians, for example, they don't do it uh, for the money. At least they don't monetize the Instagram account. Maybe, maybe they monetize it after they get, they get elected. But uh, never mind, that's, that's a whole other lecture. Uh, but the point is that if there is one thing that I want you to go out with today is that your average engagement level is the most important metric for your growth. And this is the metric that you should follow and this is the metric that you should aim to continuously uh, grow. So if you agree with this idea, then I would love you to say, to comment yes or no. Uh, I, if you think that this is not, if you think that the number of followers, for example, is more important, then uh, you know, voice yourself. I would love to hear your opinions about it. I know that it traditionally, like Adi, are you familiar with average engagement level as something that traditionally people look for uh, at for growth, or is it kind of like a new concept that uh, is not being, and th that everyone are stuck to followers. You have a lot of customers, for example. What are you guys looking for when you're looking to generate growth? Um, yes, so we always look about like the engagement of, let's say, if we are using Javi, if the people are watching us using Javi, so you probably know one of the most important metrics, as you mentioned, is the ability to engagement. And this is how we can actually tell if the account is actually good enough to use as a, to as a source or not. Interesting to see what they, oh yeah, somebody, I think it's cool. Okay, I agree, but mostly engagement is decreasing. So it's very good that you're here because we're going to talk. You know what? Like this, this brings me literally to the next topic. I said that this lecture has like this class has three parts, and we finished the first part about the theory, and this is the, the it all leads to looking at the average engagement level, and the next thing that we're going to do is to answer 
what does professional marketers do in order to continuously increase their average engagement level. And in order to do that, I want to invite a couple more people to join us to this live session because uh, we're today inviting many people. We invited the CEO of uh, Instagram, why not going wild all the way? <laughs> and the people that I want to invite are uh, professional social media marketers uh, like um, uh, Christian Boak, who I know that manages accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers and runs an agency um, for social media marketing. I'm sorry about the marketing, that's my dog. And it says, if you have a repost page, the fastest way to grow is by posting viral reels or viral content. And then Acroy Fit uh, says, uh, I'm going to tell you how to grow 500 plus followers a day. And one of his tips is post amazing content, either recreate other viral posts in your niche or repost with proper credit. Content is king. And Daniel James says, what you need to do is analyze your competitors pages. And what I hear from all of them that they're saying, and again, I'm sorry for the noise. They're all saying basically one thing. They're all saying when you do the process of choosing what you're going to post on Instagram or on any other social media, you need to work in a way that is data driven. You have to move to a data driven decision making process, which is this is what they do like analyze your competitors, post whatever is viral, recreate posts that is already uh, uh, doing uh, great in your niche. And it's not only them. I mean, if you, there is tons of research on the concept of, of becoming a data-driven business in, in business, it's like a big, big deal. We run the software company 100%, well, we try. We're not 100% data-driven, but we try to be data-driven. And, and, and um, here is a, um, a research by database that says the data-driven organizations are 162% more likely to significantly suppress revenue goals. And what I want to suggest is that data-driven Instagram accounts are 162% more likely to significantly suppress their average engagement levels. Um, and I would love to hear if you guys think that this, this makes sense to say that if you make decisions based on data, you are much more likely to, to succeed. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, if you guys agree, I would love to hear it in the comments. And then I want to uh, show you uh, Gonzalo, who, who is an act, one of the customers of Viralspy, which I talked to a couple of uh, days ago. And he agreed with me to share with you which accounts he manages. And you can see accounts with tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of, uh, of uh, followers. And he says, I run repost accounts. I really upload the most engaging content from other accounts, which guarantees having viral content on my profile. And you might think, oh, OK, that must be like whatever you're saying, all of this repost and like find what's viral, it really fits like theme accounts, right? It fits like accounts, like maybe meme accounts, or, or if you post about art or, and repost accounts, it wouldn't fit my business necessarily or an influencer. So no, you would be wrong because uh, Gilad Hanina, uh, who's a good friend of me and Adi, by the way, um, he built, he started his, his uh, agency, which is called AOS Media. Uh, AOS stands for Awareness of Success. You can look for it uh, on Instagram. It's an account that he built uh, that reached over a million followers. And it's not a repost account, but it's a theme account about success in business. And, and then in, with his agency, he's actually managing accounts of influencers. Um, and even for them, he's still using a data-driven approach. And he's what, here is what he's saying. A leading principle that helped me massively with building businesses is a data-driven approach of modeling success. Modeling exactly what is proven to be working already and twisting it into my own unique thing. So this, the concept of, of, um, of becoming data-driven when you make decisions on what content to create is something that is universally relevant for any social media account. And I want you to think for a second, before I move to the last part of this class, which is giving you the actual technical, like three steps model to start becoming data-driven yourself, I want you to think what is your uh, number? What is your average engagement level? Do you know what is your average engagement level? 
If you do know it, then, then please comment uh, the answer. If you don't know it, then, then comment, I don't know. Um, is, is it something that you are uh, following on, on an ongoing base? Um, and I see, okay, I see that answer, but Adi, let's bring it up in the end. There is a Q&A session that would fit really uh, well there. And I see, I see an answer that says 4%. It's good if you know the average engagement level with your uh, account. And okay, let's talk about, uh, about how, how could uh, anyone potentially increase it by using an, an actual methodology, which is, through, which is based on three steps, where the first step is based on what we saw earlier that was recommended, which is to make a list. And actually, I'm going to exit the, um, let me match to exit here, the full screen for a second. And I want to show you how such a list look like. And actually, you're going to get this file as well. It's going to be part of the um, list of resources in the end of this uh, uh, class. Uh, so here I created a list. And he, I have here 10 accounts because I made this list just for the purpose of this class. But I think that the list, your list should be at least, I don't know, 50 to 100 uh, accounts that you want to monitor. I call this list accounts to monitor. And I'm going to show you a very a very easy way to grow that list to 100, like very, very quickly. Within one hour, you can have 100 accounts that you want to monitor. And what I've done is I decided uh, that uh, I want to, uh, you heard my dog, so I want to create a, a, an account in the pets niche because maybe I have a, a, a hair grooming saloon for, for dogs. Um, so what I've done is I created a list of, uh, of accounts in, in the group of the pet niche and I collected their handle, but I also checked which account, which type they are. So some of them are theme pages like Barked uh, by Nangeg, which uh, uh, yeah, just a famous uh, account that they mostly repost content. Uh, some of them are influencers like Kimchi the Dog or the Snow, uh, Snow Dogs Tira Hoya and Zoya. And some of them are actually brands like Wellness Pet Food or Royal Canine, which is a very famous uh, dog food brand. Um, and then I just created the list of accounts that I'm going to monitor. And I also uh, documented it the last time that I analyzed them, uh, just for the purposes of easy analysis. And by the way, if you will choose to use this, um, uh, this file, which is going to be part of the resources of this class, uh, I created here a, a nice trick uh, in, in Google Sheets where you double click on the date and you get this calendar. Uh, so it's very easy to change the date, just in case that you want to use it. Uh, but then I didn't only uh, add here pet accounts, I also added a group of accounts that uh, talks about inspiration, like the good quote or hey anxiety, which are theme pages and a couple of influencers, because I said that if I own uh, a, grooming, a dog grooming business, I want to also inspire my customers and I want to, to make them like feel good about their relationship with, the, with their dogs. So um, I added here a couple of inspiration accounts that I want to monitor and then I want to figure out uh, what, what of their content uh, is going to be like good for me uh, to post. Uh, so the first step, as I said, is to create a list. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see here the list. And once you make the list, the second step is to start collect collecting data. And the collection of data, and again, I will need to exit the presentation here, is what we're going to do with VirusPy itself. So I want to show you how VirusPy look like and how it works. And we just launched this new version of VirusPy in the beginning of January 2022. So it's as you can see, it's still very basic. We are building, hopefully, a monster. Uh, so for example, one of the things that you're going to see me doing is I'm going to only uh, monitor one account right now. But probably within the next couple of weeks, you're going to be able to monitor 10, 20, 100 accounts together all at the same time and get the results of all of them at the same time. And yeah, I don't know if I told you that already, uh, but it's going to be the, the upcoming feature. Um, but more, more on that when we release that, you can follow what we release here up here where it says what's new. I just want to show you how it works and how it looks like. 
So I, I talked about the account to monitor and I talked about Bart, the account by Nangang, which is a team page. And if I'll click here, go, what will happen is that viral spy will go to that account and it will retrieve the last 300 posts from this account. Uh, sometimes it takes up to a minute or two uh, when you search it for the first time, but when you search it for the second and, and on time, and then it, it's really faster. And you can see it took me like five seconds to get the results because I literally ran this same search 10 minutes before this uh, session. And what you get here when you search any kind of account is you get the, the screen split uh, to two. Uh, everything that I do right here works perfectly well on mobile as well. And on the left side, you have cards. You have the account card, which I'm going to introduce you in a second. And you have uh, cards for each one of the posts that were posted by this account, um, the 300 last uh, posts. And they're already sorted by the level of engagement. So the top posts are the most viral posts already. Um, but I want to show you a little, like, OK, so good. We found all of the most viral uh, posts. But I want to show you a little bit more uh, what you have here, because there are a couple more powerful tools. So the first one is the, you, if you click on any of the cards, it will change the, the right side, because the right side show you the details about this card. So I'm going to start with the with this card of the account. And you can see here all of the metrics that I talked about, like the average number of views, which is 664,000. And you can see here that this video made more than 2 million views, which makes sense why it, it appears here first, right? Because it's the most viral one. Uh, but you also have um, their top mentions, which can help you figure out what are the related accounts that they're working with, or maybe help you uh, find influencers in case you're a business that wants to work with influencers. And you also have here their top hashtags. If you're looking for the hashtags of your competitors, so what are the hashtags that they use the most could uh, show you maybe uh, what are their most successful hashtags and what did their hashtag research give them. Um, and like what results it gave them. So you can find it here. And under it, you can find a list of similar users. And this is where you can fill up your account very, very easily because you have for each account that you search 50 related accounts over here. So maybe 9gig would not be relevant for me because uh, I, I do something for, I, like I, I try to build an account in the pet niche, but Meowed, which is about cats in case it's relevant for me, or the Dodo, which talks about animals or dog or puberty pets. I think that you get the point. You can very quickly fill up a list of 50 to 100 accounts to monitor. And that, that is the, the account card. And again, if you're watching this in the future, then first, I hope that you know there are already cool robots and flying cars and all of that. Uh, but if not, then we probably already added a couple of more features in here because we always develop and add new things and we just launched it. So like everything happens really fast right now, which is nice. Uh, and then as I said, on the left side, you have these cards. And what I wanted to show you in terms of like these cards is that if you click on one of them, then you get here this table that shows you the, uh, the post performance versus the account performance. So you can see, for example, the number of likes, which is likes, which is two hundred ninety thousand, uh, compared to the account average, it's actually one hundred ten percent more. Uh, and you can also um, open the post on Instagram. So here is the post in Instagram, and you can see a cute uh, puppy Labrador is eating uh, Adi's legs. Adi, is that you over there? Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so you can open the post there. Or you can download, uh, if you're reposting uh, the content, then you can download, which of course doesn't work for me right now because it's not a live session if you don't have uh, bugs in live. So I'll report it to the development team right after we finish. But if you download, it downloads it as a zip file. So just if you use a phone and you, you will have to unzip the, the files uh, because with the zip file uh, is the only way that we can uh, save carousels if you want all of the pictures. So that's why uh, a zip file. Um, so that in terms of like what actions you can take, but actually I think that the most powerful tool here is uh, up here, uh, which is the filters. Because what the filters allow you to do is, let's say that, uh, that I plan content once a month and I, I already planned all of the content for, ge for January. Uh, and when I did it, it was the 1st of January. So I checked the most viral content of Bart in December. 
And you can see that this post is from December, this post is from December. So when I got back to viral spy to check for their most viral content, well, I already saw this content. It's not valuable for me anymore because it went viral last month. When the end of the month will come and I will plan the, the content for February, I will want to filter and see only the content that went viral from the beginning of January. And here I can do that. And if I click apply, you will see that the, the content here is changing. Or maybe I will want to not, okay, I really want all of the content, right? Since, uh, since um, the, this is the earliest date of the 300 posts, October 23rd, but I don't want any kind of content. I want carousels only. And when I'll click carousels and I'll click apply, I will get this cute puppy over here and you will see that this is uh, a carousel of, the, of this puppy. And uh, again, this works. And then you have filters uh, with hashtags. If you want to see a specific hashtag, look how many hashtags you have here to look at all the content or uh, specific collaborations, right? Where they mention uh, another account. So you can filter by all of these uh, parameters. And again, today you can do it with one account um, but uh, within a couple of weeks, you're going to be able to do it with, uh, with a big number of accounts uh, together. So this, all in all, should um, should allow you to wait. Let me go back to the screen. Should allow you to collect valuable data, um, which is the step number two. So we created a list of accounts that we want to monitor, and now we periodically start collect collecting data and learning what goes viral for them in order. Okay, we saw this one. In order to be able to repost that content, if we have a repost account or recreate it with our own twist, if we run our own accounts. And when it comes to step three, the most important part of it is actually to create this flow, this, um, I call it a ritual of content creation. It can be in the beginning of the month, it can be in the end of the month or the next towards the next month, or it can be once a week, depending on your business, on who operates the account, et cetera, et cetera. And because you're going to uh, create this ritual of once in a while, once in every period, one week, every two weeks, every month, no matter how often, you're going to analyze your competitors and you're going to find what content went viral and you're going to plan what's going to happen next month, there is actually another type of content uh, although I'm here to, you know, I'm here to promote viral spy, right? But actually, viral spy and viral content is not the only kind of content uh, that you can create. It's probably the best content because you know for sure that it already went viral for other accounts. And if these are accounts that are similar to your content and their biggest fans, remember that flow, their biggest fans were exposed to it and they all engaged with it and it all increased the, the engagement level. Um, then that makes it the best kind of content that you can create. But there is also seasonal content that you can create. So what that means is, for example, let's say that your uh, your that my uh, dog grooming account, uh, if I follow a calendar, it has um, like different dates that tells me what kind of days are or what kind of events are, are happening this month. Maybe I will find something that is relevant for me. Now I couldn't find anything on January, but for example. Uh, did you know that on the 20th of February, there is the International Love Your Pet Day? Or there is the Super Bowl, which is less relevant. But Love Your Pet Day, for example, is super relevant for me and for my, um, my account. So in order to help you with that as well, I'm actually going to show you how it works. Um, we created a, um, in the blog here, you can see it. Uh, a marketing calendar, this marketing calendar. And this marketing calendar is actually not only um, a calendar that shows you what are the dates that are going to happen. Uh, it's a huge, huge article. There, it's like a book. There are 16,000 words written in this article. Um, but the idea is that you have here easy navigation. If you go to that specific day, like Love Your Pet Day, what we did is we also uh, sat together and thought about engaging activities that you can do with your uh, audience on that day. Everything aimed always at the same goal of increasing your engagement level. So maybe it can be fun facts that you can share with them and do quiz around. Or maybe it can be uh, a challenge that you can do with them. 
So for example, for Love Your Pet Day, we added a list of the most followed pets on Instagram worldwide, um, uh, which are uh, these guys. Uh, there is a pug in here and a grumpy cat, obviously. Uh, so uh, yeah, so maybe you can, I, I'm leaving you the creativity of what to do with it, but this article, which like, if you see, it, it, it's a long, long article because we did all of the days of the year. There are 167 events in here. Um, it's also going to be uh, available for you. And speaking of what is going to be available for you, um, before I'm moving to showing you where you can get all of these cool things and uh, giving you a, a little gift that I prepared for you, uh, I want to talk about, I want to summarize the, the three topics that we, we started with. Um, we talked today about how does Instagram uh, generate, how does Instagram work? Like how does the, what is the mechanism behind uh, the, the, the algorithm of Instagram? And we didn't invent anything. We didn't talk about a decent mind experience. We quoted the CEO, the head of Instagram in order to do that. And then we moved to talk about, we said, okay, so now that we understand that, okay, we need to increase our engagement, we did this research and we looked at what does professional marketers do in order to increase their engagement levels. And we found out that they perform research and they work in the data-driven approach. So we said, all right, if that's the case, let's become data-driven ourselves. So we created a, a process, which is three steps process, of collecting accounts that you want to monitor in order to learn their content and what goes viral to them, analyzing the, these accounts using VirusPy in that case. I'm sure that you can do it manually. It sounds to me like something that will take a long time, so I will do it with VirusPy. But just because I'm here to promote here, I'm telling you, you can also do it manually. You can scroll all of these accounts and find the most engaged posts. Um, and last, uh, creating the, the content and while creating that content or recreating that content, building a process that is an organized process, a ritual. Like, guys, like you need, make it a ritual, make like a specific dish on that day that you create content or whatever, like bring it into, into your organization or into your life if you're a solo entrepreneur. Um, and we also talked then about seasonal content, which is, you know, viral content is one thing and seasonal content is another thing. And you can read more about it in, by the way, both the articles that I, that I shared with you, uh, which you can find everything if you go to viralspy.io slash doctor dash Jarvi. Um, and let me actually show you that. Yeah. So this is the page. You might have seen it if you signed up to, the, to this masterclass. Uh, so you signed up here. I shared this link in, in the group. I know that there was a problem with broken link, but we're going to ignore it as if it never happened. Um, and if you did sign up here, maybe you read this part, but maybe you actually also missed that down here, this whole time, you didn't have to come to the lecture today because the resources were always here from to begin with. You have here the organic growth strategy article, and you have here the file accounts to monitor, which if you click on it, you can create a copy of it automatically. It's automatically like a, a copy version. Um, you have the, the calendar, which I suggest to bookmark if you're already uh, doing it, so you could refer back to it again and again. You even have the article from Adam Mosseri. I'll open it to show you. This is the article in the, uh, look at the, at the website. It's about the Instagram.com, which is also an inst interesting, uh, blog to follow in case you're interested in, in getting deeper knowledge in, on how like what's new on instagram and the last piece of, uh, of uh, content here is called the viral spy discount coupon which is a little giveaway that uh, we created for you um, so i will open it so you could see what we're talking about and then after that we will move to the q a um, but the last resource here is a, a discount coupon, and I want to show you uh, what this is all about. If you click on it, you get to an article that I published only four days ago, uh, and it talks about two things. It talks about how to use Viral Spy for free, actually how to monetize your your account, your your traffic that you can generate, and how to get a fifty percent discount coupon for 
uh, your first month uh, uh, in viral spine. I'm going to make some a special announcement here just for you guys, just because it's like four days old. I'm going to make something even more fun for you guys. Um, so the part about how to use viral spy for free, uh, I, I recommend you to read about it. It talks about uh, our decision of why we decided to create an affiliate program for viral spy. Basically, long story short, because we prefer not to pay to Facebook ads and Google ads in order to get people to sign up to Viral Spy, we prefer to invest our time in creating good content, hopefully good like this, and that you guys will share it with other people and then we will pay you because this is a better way. We want to grow as a company. We are a for-profit company. We're not hiding it. We're proud of it, uh, but we prefer to, to spend our money on you. So it explains here how you can do it. Yeah, but other than an affiliate program, which is not always available for everyone, not always you have like, you know, people to, to like, not always you, you feel comfortable with it. I hope that you do. Um, we, cre we also created a challenge that can get you 50% discount. And what we decided to do is we decided to do something uh, that will be valuable. Um, I, I'll, I'll actually quote myself here. We want to incentivize you to bring value to the social media marketers community. That's you guys. That's this community that we're right now in. By posting something interesting, which is how you bring value to the community, and mention Viral Spy, which is how we gain from it the growth that we're looking for as a company. And in order for you to be able, and if you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to get a 50% literally refund. We like manually refund you if you do that. Because what we say is post something and then go here to the chat support and write to us and send us a screenshot and we will refund you and we'll give you 50% off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going only for the people uh, in this group, we're going to give 100% off on the first month, which means completely free for the first 10 people that will complete this challenge uh, from this group. And that's including you, Adi, so I expect it to be the first one, right? <laughs> um, I'm joking. Uh, but in order uh, to make it easy for you, uh, we also created here, we answered two questions. We, are, we answered the question where to post and what to post, because I want to make it simple for you, for you to see that there is real value in it. When it comes to where to post in order to complete the challenge and get your free month of Viral Spy, uh, by the way, I didn't mention it, but Viral Spy also comes with seven days free trial and like, three credits that you can try in the beginning. So like you really get a long time of, of using it for free and you will be able to see value. But when it comes to where to post, uh, we created this file, which is free for you to access, which contains a list of, I think, 270 communities. And there are LinkedIn communities and Facebook communities and Quora communities and WhatsApp communities and Telegram communities and community Reddit communities, anywhere that you can think of. And this has two, this answers two things. First, you have where to post in order to complete this challenge, which is awesome. But really, we also wanted to create you this list for you to be able to find more communities that you enjoy and that you like, because becoming, uh, be becoming better and in, in, in growing your, your presence on social media is something that has to be, it has to be, it takes a lot of investment. And by you engaging with these communities, you will be able to find maybe new ways and more tactics and more interesting things. So that's one thing. And the second thing that we answered is what to post. So I gave you all kinds of ideas by from sharing your plans for 2022, and I gave you an example, to share a piece of content that you like, maybe this webinar or the, the content calendar that I just showed you. Here is a post on Reddit or here, or maybe just helping someone. So someone posted something on Reddit and I commented uh, with a list of resources. One of them was a link to Viral Spy, maybe two, I don't know. Uh, and then he said, wow, this is so helpful. And this is what we will try to create. Like if you will make someone say, wow, this is helpful, we want you to use Viral Spy for free, at least for the first month, um, because you created value for the community. So we kind of like wanted to make it a, a fun, fun activity uh, and valuable. And of course, the last thing that you can do is what Christian did in his community, uh, Instagram Marketing Secrets, which is to post your results and then an explanation to how you, of how you got to them. Uh, I quoted this post earlier. So um, you will find all of that uh, in the link uh, valspy.io slash drjarvi. 
uh, Dr. Dash Jarvi. And uh, with that, ah, yeah, no, I wanted, I was supposed to show you that before I tell you <laughs> about the giveaway. Uh, but with that, um, I want to thank you for the time and the attention that uh, um, you put into into this topic, into growing your own account, and into giving me the opportunity to to try to help you guys. And I want to open uh, this session to Q and A to see if you guys have any questions. And since we're almost one hour live, and I think that uh, we'll take a couple of minutes, and it will be perfectly in time to to a one hour session, right? Yeah, it's perfectly in time. Yeah, fair. You are like I think you are really professional, really like all of the all of the knowledge, all of the value, like also all of like the gift you give to the people over here. So it's really amazing, and I want to thank you for that. Um, so you do have a few questions. I think it's Paul actually asking you over here. This is his first question. I have to drink some tea. I love my voice. Can you read it? Yeah, sure. Um, so he's asking problem we are facing. One, we are a small uh, company. Two, a lot of micro competitors, uh, like photographers, most of them has no good Instagram account. Okay, why don't we both try to, to give it an answer? I, I want to refer to one thing. Um, Paul, if you think that by following, and I'm gonna close the, the screen sharing. Okay, look at us, you can see us big. Ade is more beautiful than me, so focus on her. Uh, 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 Paul, I, I think that when you create a list, if you will focus on micro competitors that are photographers that, that doesn't have good Instagram accounts and you will look for one what went viral for them, I don't think that, that the growth will come from there. I think that maybe what you need to do is to invest this hour to look at the best performing like photography uh, accounts in the world, like to find like seriously successful photography accounts and then start analyzing them and then learning from them. And then maybe, you know, even if you don't have a repost account, it doesn't mean that if you find a piece that went viral, you can share it to your story, for example. Right? Not all of us are sharing things to the post, but maybe we, you can share it to your story. And by sharing it to your story, you can comment on it. You can add some text and you can refer to it. And you already know that it brings a lot of engagement because it went viral somewhere, but you give it your personal twist and that could create engagement and that could give you maybe that kick in your stories. Maybe if you don't run a repost account or maybe you can create a repost account for your niche and repost this content, this content, and gain traffic from there, uh, and then have in the uh, in the bio your other account tag. It's kind of like it's it's a, a some version of what is called the master slave uh, uh, technique. But uh, the, uh, like marketers, like marketers would tell me would say that this is not the master slave technique. I said it is a version of it. Uh, Adi, what what can you add to it? Yes, I think you had a great answer to Paul. I think it's Paul. Paul, if it's you, so say it's you. <laughs> I think so with, with the questions. Um, I think that I, I don't really, like I think any competition you have, you can actually make something with him. So instead of like to see them as competitors, you can actually make some live session with them. And you know, today you can actually schedule live and put it on your, like near to your bio. And you can post this live in both of your profiles. So I think instead of to see them as a competition, see like, you know, there is enough for everyone. The world is pretty big. So I would uh, consider looking at, about it in a different uh, attitude. Um, and as for like they, they don't have a good Instagram account. So, you know, maybe you can help them with that because I know you like selling the photos, right? So think about how you can benefit from that, like how they can get value from that. And then also how you can benefit from this. It's like it's all about the attitude. I think it might even be a new monetization channel for you to advise them on that money. Again, if it fits your use case. Okay. Exactly. We have more, we have more questions. Yes, it's virus by working for small accounts. Uh, it will work for any account that you like any account that you insert to the search box that I showed will be analyzed. And what we do, it's a, it's a good 
thing to, to mention is a lot of people, a lot of times people are asking us about the timeline uh, because what we do is we don't look at the uh, post from the last month. We look all the, always at the last 300 posts. So if the, if the account is posting three times per day, 300 posts will be, uh, like if you think a month will be 90 posts, you will have about three months uh, content. And if the account is posting once a week, you will have three years content, right? So it depends on how often the account that you're analyzing is posting. But yeah, no matter how big is the account, Vowels Python analyzes. Cool. Oh, oh. let us know how it's going. So he's already trying that. <laughs> that was fast. Good. Okay. That, nice. That's pretty good. good. Let, let us know. Let me know the, the feedback. I would love to hear. As I said, we, we are relatively in the beginning of this venture. Um, even if it's not my first software company, every every new venture feels like the first time. Definitely. Um, guys, if you have any more questions, to Phil, so feel free to ask him. As you can see, this guy has a lot of knowledge and is really, really generous <laughs> with all of that. So thank you very much. Phil, I just want to add a um, last thing about the people um, he wants to keep in touch with you. Yeah. Right. So just just for the Java people or for the automation people who are watching this say uh, this session, so I believe uh, this session can help you to get viral content for your theme page, and then you can of course use automation to repost this type of content, tools like Java or sharing tools or next post. Um, I think the second uh, case study for you that can be like use case, sorry, could be very very beneficial. And if you are Java user, so maybe you remember that from a few years ago that uh, you can actually see similar accounts so you can actually get more souls to java and as you know today it's all about content and follow-back ratio so virus can actually give you accounts you can use to target for your clients so i think these two the use cases are very 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 powerful and of course like you know to generate content for your page and analyze the competitors to be more viral because as phil mentioned eventually it's all about how viral you go what is your engagement this is what's important, more than the followers. Uh, so I totally agree with that. Any more things you want to add, Phil? I just want to thank you for the opportunity. This is the first time I'm giving this lecture. And I want to mention that uh, since the, specifically for this community, if you guys own other communities that are on other topics, um, for example, one of our, our um, users in Virospy, he owns a community of uh, Berber shop owners, because that is, you know, that's what he creates content for. And then Viral Spy could a lot of times fit his audience. So if you happen to own a big community and Viral Spy fits your audience, I would love if you would like contact me and we would talk about the collaboration. And of course, we can work on the, uh, with the affiliate program. And uh, I will do my best to bring to customize the, the content to your uh, community. I know that this, like, I'm doing it just because in this community, there's so many people that own their own communities because like this is kind of like what, what you guys are working with, with the, the kind of audience that we have here. So I'm mentioning it. And uh, yeah, I would love to be in touch with basically anyone that can help us with this journey of jump-starting this business and growing it. And uh, thank you for taking the time to listen. And thank you for helping me, Adi. I hope it's not the last time. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, definitely we're going to make another session. Of course, guys, if you want, so comment and tell us what we, you want to speak, if you will speak on the next session. Thank you very much, Kvir. Thank you, all of you, for watching. Uh, check the links below or below in the description. You will have everything, of course. And see you on the next time. Bye-bye.